In this video, I'm going to explain how to set up a player perspective in a DAW. Now, first, I do realize that most people will be using the audience perspective version, but since I plan to release pianos in the future using this ambisonic VR technique, I think it's worthwhile to give it a try. I know that it may get pretty involved, but trust me, it's definitely worth it. I also wanted to address the previous way that I did binaural recording. Uh, while that way still works, this new technique is, I think, superior, and the head tracking method shown here can be applied to the original experience library. As you recall, I recorded the Experience Fazioli F308 with three head angles. I'm now going to show you how to route this in Reaper, apply the plugins, and then get head tracking to work. So first, here's a tool, list of tools that you're going to need. Uh, the first, of course, is a sampler, either Contact or Sforzando, as I've uh, included both formats for the library. Uh, you're going to need my library, the Experience Fazioli F308, and I uh, potentially will be adding uh, new libraries to the experience line in the future. Uh, you're going to need a DAW with multi-channel tracks such as Reaper and I'm going to be using Reaper as my example. Uh, you're going to need these free ambisonic VST plugins. Uh, I use the IAM plugin suite which you can download here and you know go ahead and install those into your DAW. You're also going to need a webcam and head tracking app. Uh, I particularly use the FacePose app for my phone which is quite effective. Uh, or you can use the IEM webcam head truck. And then finally, you need a transition uh, script that I wrote and OSC2 bot, uh, which then links the webcam uh, to the DAW. Now, in part one of the video, I'm going to be showing how to set up all of the plugins into Reaper, as well as how to route all of the uh, inputs or outputs from the sampler. Uh, that includes the IEM multi-encoder, which then puts the uh, speakers in the correct place. The IEM scene rotator, which then allows you to rotate the scene relative to your head. And then an IEM binaural decoder, which then um, mixes it down into headphones. In part two of the video, we're going to add the webcam head tracking app, uh, which using the OSC2, OSC2 bot translator, then becomes an input into the IEM scene rotator, which allows you to rotate your head so the webcam detects when you're turning your head and then the scene rotator then rotates in real time as you're playing. So let's get started. So I'm showing you my Reaper session right here and I've got the first three tracks are separate instances of Sforzando. Uh, the first one is uh, utilizes the level angle which is a separate Sforzando file that I've in, uh, that I've included. Uh, the second is the the up angle and then the third is the down angle Sforzando file. So these are separate stereo pairs on uh, three stereo tracks and I'm going to mix them down to, into an ambisonic mix and then apply the plugins to the ambisonic mix. Uh, incidentally when this is all finished and you do want to just perform or play uh, you have to enable these three files and then make sure that your MIDI inputs are triggering all three of these tracks uh, and then uh, you should be able to hear the ambisonic mix coming th out of the fourth track. So let's start with the routing. The first thing you do is you go to the route menu here and you turn off the master send because you don't want uh, those st that stereo pair going to the master. Uh, you want to send that to the ambisonic mix uh, for and we want uh, audio pairs one and two, or audio channels one and two, going to one and two uh, in the ambisonic mix as well. Now we're going to go to the second uh, track, go to the routing file again, and then send, also send that to the ambisonic mix. And this time we're going to want to um, route the first two audio uh, channels to channels three and four of the ambisonic mix and then turn off the master set again. And then on the third track, you're going to want to go to the route again, turn off the master send as we did for the first three, and go back to the ambisonic mix and route one and two to uh, five and six. So now, uh, now all six channels are going into the ambisonic mix. And here we're going to make sure that everything looks okay. Uh, there should be six channels here. I don't know if that's correct or not, but it works for me. So now for the ambisonic plugins, you go to the FX panel 
and then choose as the first plug-in the uh, multi-encoder and I'm just going to throw all of the uh, all the effects in here uh, in the correct order and then change them later but the second one you put in is the scene rotator which will rotate the scene and then the third one you put in here is the binaural decoder and this one will decode all six channels uh, in, into um, into headphones uh, binaurally so that it's it it sounds and feels like um, you're playing with the piano in front of you. Now we go back to the multi-encoder and you'll notice that it's by default only showing five uh, channels. We need to make sure that actually all six channels are mixed in. So I've enabled six channels here and then we have to go through and set the virtual uh, position of the speakers. So here I'm going to go um, for you know channels one and two. This as you might remember is uh, the level angle and channels three and four are the up angle and channels five and six are the down angle. So let's go through here and change this. We're going to make this uh, negative 60. Actually, I'm sorry. It's actually positive 60. And we're going to make this uh, negative 60. And because it's level, we're going to leave these at zero. Uh, then I'm going to go through here and also go 60. Oops. Negative 60. 60, negative 60, Ooh. negative 60, and uh, for the up angle, we're going to go 40 degrees up, 40 degrees up, and then for the down angle, we're going to go negative 40 degrees down, and negative 40 degrees down. Now, this calibration actually works well for me. Uh, in future releases, I may have to change these settings just a little bit to make sure that uh, everything feels natural. Uh, but uh, so far, this is working really well. Uh, I also do turn turn the dB down here to say negative eight or so because when you're triggering um, triggering uh, you know three stereo pairs, it can be pretty loud. So I typically do this, but you can do this to taste. So there you go. Now we're going to go to Scene Rotator, and uh, I'll show in a different video, or a little bit later in this video, uh, how to set up the OSC control. But now, uh, to be able to turn your head, you just uh, you know rotate this, and then to look up and down, you rotate this, and we'll get the actual head tracking to to uh, control these parameters uh, a little bit later. Now for contact, the routing is a little bit different. You have to do some of the routing within contact, and it's already done for you in that in the file that I've attached uh, for the, the experience files uh, already are routed uh, channels one through six. But what you have to do is you have to first open your contact instrument on a, on a track, uh, but then you need to go into contact and then um, change the number of output channels here and to six, like so, hit OK. Then you can open the, fi the file, and as you can see here, uh, it's already pretty preloaded with six six channels here. And if I choose a different group, for example, uh, the down angle, the down angle is already routed uh, channels five and six. Uh, now you have to go over here to the uh, the tracks here, and uh, again turn off the master send for uh, for contact, and then send to the ambisonic mix. Um, all six channels. So actually what I need to do is go back up here and make sure that I've got six parent channels selected uh, and there are six channels here and then make sure that multi-channel sources six channels one and six go to one and six here. Okay so there you go. Let's now set up head tracking. Let me first describe how the data chain works for head tracking. It starts with FacePose app, which is an app that I run on my mobile phone that utilizes the webcam to detect what angle my head is at. Uh, that FacePose app can be run uh, either on iOS or on Android. And the output for that is called OSC, or an OSC format, Open Sound Control. Uh, this is then sent through Ethernet, or actually through Wi-Fi, uh, to OSC 2Bot, which is running on my computer. And which translates it into a different type of OSC command through port 7600 into the IEM scene rotator. 
So the first thing to do then is to set up face pose app. So once you got that running on your mobile phone, you go to the settings and hit enable in the OSC communication settings. Uh, you, you enable the OSC and then enter the IP address destination of your computer because it's sending data to your computer and choose port 8020, which is the port that I've designated uh, in, to receive the data in the next app. Now let's set up OSC2 bot. First you download it from the website, and then just extract it into a folder. Now place FacePose app to iemscenerotator.txt, uh, which is the file that I've included with the sample library, uh, into the same folder. Incidentally, you can also place the FacePose app to MIDI CC01 text file also, which is the file you would use to translate your head position into the original experience library. Now when you double click, osc2bot.exe, the utility will open and automatically load the scripts that are in the same folder. The final setup step is to set up IEMC and Rotator to receive the, the OSC data. All you have to do is click on the OSC icon on the bottom of the VST plugin and enter port 7600 and then hit open to enable. That's it for setup. Okay, great, let's start it up now. So first make sure that your phone is on the same network as the PC, and then start up the app on the phone. Press play to start the camera running. Then go to your PC and double click on OSC2 bot to get the background translation running. Finally, you just go to your DAW now, open up IEM Scene Rotator, make sure that the, the OSC is being received in the bottom corner and then enable the tracks for MIDI input and go ahead and start playing. Now for calibration, there are two things that I recommend trying if the default calibration is not working well for you. The first thing to do is to open up the FacePose app to IEM Scene Rotator text file with a text editor and just change the number that I'm showing here, um, the 0.62, a number that might, might suit you a little better. This is the scaling factor for uh, how far you turn your head to how much the uh, speakers rotate. And then the second thing would be, and the final thing would be to change the position of the uh, speakers. Uh, you have control over that through the IEM multi-encoder as I showed in part one. Have fun!